friends, this is Charity from Group Publishing. You know, right now, lots of people are looking at what's happening around them. People getting sick, churches, schools, and businesses closing, and they're worried. Being worried is just natural. But if you're a friend of Jesus, there's something you can do with your worry, because Jesus' power calms our worries. We'll explore that in a minute. But first, let's talk about this past week's God sightings. Where have you seen God provide for you? Where has he been busy working in your world? For me, I took a walk over the weekend. It had just snowed here where I live in Colorado, and the snow was clinging to the trees in the most beautiful way. It reminded me that God is always close by. That's my God sighting. What's yours? Pause me for a minute so that you can talk about that with your family. And <laughs> look, I've made myself a handy dandy pause sign so you don't always have to look at my pause face. <laughs> All right. Talk about your God sightings with your family. Now, I'm curious, what do you do with worry? Well, these kids in the video that we're about to sing along to, they have a pretty good idea. So how about you get on your feet and let's join them. Sing with us. Free like a bird in the big blue sky Not a cloud or a care for a million miles I won't worry, worry about a thing <laughs> loves me and he loved me first he rescued me when i was in a lurch and i won't worry worry about a thing <laughs> to the left i'll fly 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 to the right i'll fly glide glide oh and i won't worry worry about a thing i'm gonna swoop down low is 
such a catchy song. Sometimes I find myself humming it throughout the day, especially now. But can I admit something to you though? When I first heard it, I thought, but what if I am worried about a thing? I found though, that the song helps me remember my friend Jesus and helps me focus on him. My worries get a little smaller as my trust in Jesus gets bigger. And now that's a great song to help us remember that Jesus' power calms our worries. Now before we dive in, here is what you'll need for our experience today. Okay, you'll need your journal that you started last week. If you didn't start one last week, just get some paper that you can write or draw on. Now, you'll also need a few other pieces of paper. They don't have to be fancy. It can be the back of paper that you have available, just some pieces of paper for everybody in your family. And then you'll need a bowl of water, uh, maybe one for each person would be good if you can, so that way everybody has their own. We'll also need some pepper, you can share that. Some dish soap, and I got a little container for my dish soap so that I didn't use too much of it at once. Okay, so you'll need these things. I'll leave them here so that you can refer to them as you pause and get your supplies. Ready, set, pause. The world sure seems really worried. Worried about the COVID-19 virus, about jobs, about so many things. I'm curious, friends, what worries are you hearing about right now? Maybe you aren't hearing about worries and that's okay. Think about a worry that maybe you've had in the past. Uh, it could be about a test or a big game. Just think about a worry. Did you know that it can be helpful to write or draw your worries? It helps you process them. So let's do that right now. You need paper and something to write with. Then I want you to write or draw worries that you're feeling now or you remember feeling in the past. You're gonna write one worry on each piece of paper. And really, I mean, you can make a whole bunch of them because we're gonna use them a little bit later, okay? So draw your worries and pause the video while you do that. Ready? Pause. <laughs> now talk about this with your family. What do you usually do when you get worried? For me, when I get worried, it usually helps me to take a big, deep breath, kind of like this. <sighs> Sometimes when they take the deep breath, I like to make my lips do something funny too, like this. <laughs> do you want to try that? Take a deep breath and then let it out. Ah, pretty fun, right? Just taking that deep breath and that pause really helps me when I worry. What about you? Okay, you're gonna pause me again and you're gonna talk about what you do when you worry. And as you talk, I want you to crumple up these pieces of paper that you wrote or drew on for every different thing that you mention, okay? You're gonna need these paper wads in just a few minutes. Ready? Tell your family, what do you usually do when you worry? You know, there was a guy in the Bible who trusted Jesus. But then he started to worry and things didn't go so well. If you wanna follow along in your Bible, look up Matthew 14, verses 22 to 33. I'll say that again. Matthew chapter 14, 
verses 22 to 33. And guess what, friends? It's another boat story. <laughs> so the story goes like this. Jesus' friends, they were in a boat. Jesus had just miraculously fed a whole bunch of people. And Jesus needed a little me time. <laughs> Maybe you could use a little me time right now too, hmm? Well, Jesus had told his friends to get in a boat and go across the lake. And Jesus was going to stay back and pray. So Jesus' friends, they got in the boat. And sometimes when you're in a boat, you kind of rock back and forth like this. Where you're sitting, can you rock back and forth like me? Like we're in a boat? Do, 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 do. Huh. It's getting a little chilly. It's like the wind picked up and the waves, they got bigger and bigger. Jesus' friends were in trouble and the boat was rocking back and forth, harder and harder. Can you rock more with me? It was like the wind was howling. Ho, ho. Oh, that sounds more like a dog than the wind, but you can go ahead and howl like a dog too. Ho. The boat was rocking, but Jesus' friends, they, they, they looked and they saw something coming toward them on the water. It was someone walking. Can you make your most surprised face like, oh, someone's walking on water? It was Jesus. And so Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to walk on the water too. So Peter, he, he got out of the boat to walk on water with Jesus. Now we're going to stop right there and I need you all to do something. So pick one of you in the room right now to be Peter. You're going to pretend to be Peter. You got somebody? Three, two, one. Okay, Peter, raise your hand. Awesome. Hi, Peter. Peter, you are going to stand up right where you are. Nice. And you're going to look across the room. And wherever you're looking across the room, we're going to imagine that we're looking at Jesus over there. Now, I don't know what your rooms look like. Uh, maybe it's a window over there or a refrigerator. Whatever it is, Peter, as you stand there, I want you to imagine that you are watching Jesus across the room. So Peter, are you ready? You're going to step out of the boat. Go ahead and step with me. Take a step up and over. <laughs> now stand on the water and take one step toward Jesus, keeping your eyes fixed on him. Now, take another step. Now freeze right there, Peter. Everybody else in the room, as Peter walks, you are going to do something too. You are going to throw these paper worries at him. Okay, so when I say go, we're going to let Peter walk and then I'll shout throw and you throw the worry wads. Okay, Peter, go. Family members, throw. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Okay, friends, we are going to pause the video because this is too much fun for just one Peter. So go ahead and give everybody a turn to be Peter. They're going to walk across the room with their eyes fixed on Jesus while everybody else picks up and throws the worry wads at them. Okay, go ahead and give me a pause while you do that with everyone in your family and make sure the grown-ups take a turn too. Okay, go for it. That's like what happened to Peter. He looked around and he saw the wind and the waves and worried that he would drown. 
He took his eyes off Jesus and the worry started distracting him. And when Peter paid more attention to his worries than to Jesus, he sank like a rock. But Jesus grabbed Peter by the arm and he saved him. Jesus was right there. Now, you're going to pause me again. Don't worry, I don't mind. <laughs> and you're going to talk about this question. It's got two parts. Here's the first part. Out of all the things that you could be worried about, what's one that you worry about most? And how is that distracting you from Jesus? I'm going to say that again because it's a little bit long. So out of all of the worries and the thoughts that you might be worrying about right now, what's one that's kind of the biggest worry? And how could that be distracting you or your family from keeping your eyes on Jesus? Ready to talk about that? Go for it. Friends, thank you for sharing. You know, talking about worries with people you trust is always a good thing. If your worries sometimes distract you from Jesus, you're just like Peter. But you can discover that, like he did, that Jesus' power calms our worries. Now, let's try a fun experiment that shows how Jesus' power can calm our worries. So you are going to need these things. So we've got a bowl of water, we've got some pepper, and we've got a little bit of dish detergent. So first, I'd like for you to look at your bowl of water. It is clear and clean. But then worries, they start sprinkling in. Little worry here, then a few more there. And suddenly, worries are everywhere. So, uh, grown-ups in the room, I think you should be in charge of the pepper. Go ahead and sprinkle some in the water so that you can see a lot of worry in your bowl. This pepper, when I look at it in the water, it kind of reminds me of all of the wind and the waves that were surrounding Peter. Now, we have a lot of worries coming at us right now, kind of like the pepper in your bowls. I'll pause for a moment and make sure everybody's got some pepper. Got it? Hmm. How can we make these worries run away from us instead of all oh, getting close to our hearts. Well, one thing we can try is to clear them out on our own. So lift up your pinky finger like this and you're gonna dip it in the water and see if you can like make the pepper kind of go to the sides. Can you do it? Eh. Huh. Oh, well I got some pepper on my finger. <laughs> But it really didn't do anything of making sure that the worry goes away. It actually just made it stick to me more. So let's do this instead. Go ahead, <laughs> wipe off your finger, and then put some dish soap on the tip of your finger, just like this. Got the soap? Now. When everybody has the soap, we're gonna put it in the water and oops, look, I dripped some soap in and it already did it. All of the pepper or the worry went to the side of the bowl. You try it. Put your finger in the water with the soap on it and watch as the pepper doesn't stay in the middle, but it goes to the sides instead. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's like the soap is our friendship with Jesus, and Jesus' power can calm our worries. All we have to do is keep our eyes on Jesus. So go ahead and wipe off your pinky. It's so cool, huh? 
Jesus doesn't just have power over wind and waves. He has power over worries too. And he has power over the coronavirus. Friends, when we keep our eyes on Jesus, our worries stop bombarding us. Jesus' power calms our worries. Now, pause me again and talk about this. What would help you keep your eyes on Jesus during this worrying time? What would help you keep your eyes on Jesus during this worrying time? Go ahead and talk about that with your families. I'll just be here uh, cleaning off my finger with the pepper. <laughs>